I just yeah. heard was that. that your, was that your tummy? No, that's yours. It was mine? Oh, okay. Hello, Dr. Julie. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. You are looking spectacular today. You look absolutely gorgeous. That's because it's your favorite color, green. Uh, Yep. <laughs> and it looks good on you, and you look absolutely beautiful. Doesn't she? She looks super, super pretty today. Just thank you for dressing and looking mm -hmm. like that. Makes my day. So, what do you want to talk about today? You always have the topic. I know I do. So today we are talking about the safety of chiropractic in children. So today's title is To Be or Not To Be. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Prime Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Skip Weiss, the Bowtie Chiropractor. Sans no bow tie today. Coming straight in today, wearing the polo because I just wanted to. This one's from Scotland, from the old course at St. Andrews. Thought I was feeling a little bit golfy today. Um, I'm with Dr. Fairy Fingers, the BDC certified coach, Dr. Julie Weiss, the absolute amazing brilliance behind what makes us so wonderful at Prime Family Chiropractic Centers. I can't thank you enough for that. So, Dr. Julie, we get asked a lot of questions about adjusting children, and I think what scares a lot of parents is the noise, the pop, the click. They assume children are going to be adjusted just like adults, and that couldn't be farther from the truth, don't you think? Adults get adult size adjustments, and kids get kid size adjustments. Exactly. They are two totally different things. Yeah, and I think that at times um, parents generally get a little bit freaked out as far as the noise, the pop, the click. They see adults get adjusted all the time, and that couldn't be farther from the truth or case of how we take care of children here at Prime Family Chiropractic Centers or in chiropractic in general. If you're seeing a chiro that's certified in children, certified in pediatrics, which I think is an absolute must um, to understand their full gamut of education. Necessity, just like it is a necessity. everybody gets an over an over arching teaching and education mm -hmm. in chiropractic and then within that then there's little niches that you can go down and, and specialties just like a a, a general gp mm -hmm. you know medical doctor and then you have a, a pediatrician that's in there you have a gastrologist you have all the different specialties sure so it's the same thing in chiropractic yep. that there are specialties in pregnancy and pediatrics there is and the webster certification is what kind of hit on last week the week before and the week the week before that when we were talking about pregnancy and prepping for pregnancy and actually understanding what we need as parents to take care of our children after they're born and what to do working up to that but more importantly you need to find out where your chiropractor has been trained i can tell you right now going through chiropractic school we had very little training on how to adjust children. We had very little training on how to properly adjust them. It came all postgraduate. Now, and not necess I don't think a chiropractor needs to necessarily be certified in children in, in pediatric work, although I think that it is incredibly important. But the certification isn't necessarily the end-all, be-all. I would look at a couple things. Number one, how many years they've been in practice, how many children they've taken care of, but where did they actually get their formal pediatric training from? I think that is absolutely huge. I think one of the questions that we get from some of our parents is, you know, I'm not sure, like maybe we see the kids, and maybe the, the parent goes someplace else mm -hmm. or that they've been someplace else before coming to see us. And it was, well, I didn't know if my chiropractor actually saw kids. Yeah. And my response back is, well, did you ever see any children oh, yeah. in the reception mm -hmm. area? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a true telltale sign of first, do families show up? Do mm -hmm. they show up in, in big vans? Are they showing up in groups? Are, is it a loud office? Big vans is, is, but is an understatement. I, th I think a really easy rule of thumb is first, do you see those types of, do you see little itty bitty babies? Do you see moms showing up after, mm -hmm. after, you know, delivery? Mm -hmm. Do you see that population in the clinic? If you don't, then really maybe have that question ask if, if that provider, you know, sees that population and maybe when was the last time that they've actually adjusted or, or cared for a child? Yeah, I think that's a valid question. You know, we look at the stats nationwide and the most successful 
offices that see that say they see children only see about 23 percent total if if that usually it's in the teens and a lot of it then is adult-based chiropractic i think which then scares people um it also i would ask is that does the office show that they see children does it does it when you walk in does it feel like a professional pediatric um space do they have facilities available in the office that actually shows that you see children like a playhouse do they have toys? Do they have magnets? Do they have things that children can play with, and not just a table in the corner um, with some with some dusty, you know, coloring cardboard books. books and coloring books on it, and that supposedly they see kids? I would say that that's probably not the place um, that sees children on a regular basis, or that that is their emphasis or their specialty. I would even say like the bathroom. Right? Yeah, How the many bathroom times is have you key. Been someplace. And yeah, it's actually, like, you know, like especially the in, a in hidden. A hidden gem. In a, in a pediatric office, it's most times if somebody's coming in, like my baby hasn't been pooping, constipation, yep. it's sometimes like seconds after the adjustment and that baby's having a blowout. So do you yeah. have the facilities? Do you have the baby changing tables? Do you have, you know, the diapers, the wipes? Do you have those things available to be able to, because it's like 911, like we need to get that baby changed because it's going to oh, be a you mess. post adjustment, man. Like that's how it works all the time is that they get an adjustment and they should probably get a diaper on their way out because they're going to have a blowout or they're going to go into the playhouse and have a, have a good poop after the adjustment or before they come back. We, that, that, that little cottage that we have built up front, it's the constipation it's, it cottage. really is an outhouse. Kids <laughs> go in there all the time to go to the bathroom because they're comfortable here. That is a place of, of solace for them. It's a place of privacy, which I find funny, but it's a place of comfort. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in order for the GI to work in a child, you need to be in the rest and digest function. You need to be in a calm state because if they're in a stressed out state, they ain't going to the bathroom. I've never seen a kid uh, void his bowels or, you know, take a crap while he's on the run. It just try, doesn't work that way. Tell your chasing or a house fire. Yeah, you're it, not, oh, let me, go, let me go to the bathroom it first. It just doesn't work that way. Now, if we go into care for a child, often we get a question as to, hey, Dr. Skip, Dr. Julie, how do I find a chiropractor that sees a child? Because we get that question a lot. We have a strong Instagram following. We have a very strong YouTube following. We have a strong Facebook following. So we deal and ask and get asked a lot of questions. And commonly, I'll get questions on Facebook in messenger form saying, hey, Dr. Skip, I live in so-and-so city. How do I find a chiropractor that takes care of children? What would be their first steps, do you think, for a parent to find a, a chiropractor that actually sees kids? How do they sift through the hundreds that could be in the area? Yeah, so many times I get that question yeah. from or it gets tasked it gets tasked to me. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of times my comment back is just give me your zip code and yep. I you know I'll kind of go through that work. But if you're one of those that you're okay sifting through it, um, the ICPA, yeah, one of our um, accrediting bodies, the International yes. Chiropractic Pediatrics Association. If you go to ICPA for Kids. Dot com, I com believe it is. Or dot org. Um, and right on that, on the front page, it'll say find a find a doctor. Um, and so typically, you can just click right on that, and you can put in your zip code, mm -hmm. and it'll show a list. Now, let me put a disclaimer there because there is differences within that list. Yes. You need to look at the titles because some of them will say um, certified, so they're going to have a CACCP or a diplomate after their name. CACCP. Those yeah. are going to be those that have done additional credentialing and training. Mm -hmm. But just like anything, you can also pay to be within. Well, it'll also say Webster certified, website. which is yes. a pregnancy certification. Correct. So you're looking for those things that say those designations, and those will typically show up to the top of the list. They show up first. Um, another key thing, if sometimes you're kind of like, well, this is really close. If you see the little branding that says um, Pathways Magazine or Pathways mm -hmm. Meetup, that is just like what we hold in our clinic. Um, that is more of a, a family geared office that um, has the Pathways Family Magazine. They're going to be maybe a little bit more holistic, alternative um, mindset and thinking. So that would also be a really good indicator that, okay, that might be the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody else is going to start to fill in there that, again, that potentially doesn't have that certification, doesn't yeah, have just training. Paid, they've just paid for the membership. They're on the website. They, but they'll be and that's just kind of a, a little, just a, a little warning there just mm -hmm. to, you know, to see what those differences are. But just like anything, like when I give a recommendation, I give the recommendation, but just like us, 
you need to make that phone call. You need to show up. You need to ask those questions. And do you feel welcome? Do you feel like, okay, I think, uh, I think this feels good. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to start to trust. Because like, as a mom, you have to trust that gut. And if after you've done the research and maybe you've made that phone call, you've gone in and it's kind of like, okay, this feels like the right place, then I'd probably start. I think then is the website as well. Um, you can make a website look any way you want, but you can tell pretty quickly, do they see children? Do they see families from the website? What are the first few images that pop up? What, are the, what does it say across the banner? And to me, that's really important because if there's a tab that says services offered, but next to it, there's not a tab that solely says children or pediatric care, they're, that's really not their focus. And Cairo's out there. Here's a little thing for you that listen to this as well. You've listened to me for over four years talk about pediatrics and chiropractic, and now you can find me over on Cairo Sushi Samurai doing that exclusively for that content. But like I've said, you know that it needs to show that you see children. So on your websites, make sure that the parent knows that you see them. So your website should look like it. It should have a banner on top with its own button away from everything else saying children, pediatric care. So a parent can sit on that, click that go down, start reading the start reading the information that's there that's provided from trusted resources, including yourself, to show the parent that you take care of kids and that you can do it safely and effectively. Now, let's bust out into something else. Let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit. Something that I love to talk about is technique and adjustments of little kids' spines because that's key because we know we looked at this from infants and newborns. The newborn care from one to one from zero to one years old is much different from one to four, and seven and above is different. And so let's go down and we talk a little bit into newborn care. What are we doing there, Dr. Julie? How are we taking care of these little ones? With itty bitty adjustments, yep. itty bitty analysis. Um, like if you're at the grocery store and you're looking at we're almost into this like um, end of summer so like peaches and nectarines yeah when you go to check that fruit or even a tomato oh okay. if you're yeah. pushing on that so i we went to that we went to garden i'm like why are we going where are we uh, going in gardening I'm just, here i'm just trying and, to uh, emphasize the, produce, the produce. you know the the pressure okay. that yeah. of what of what a baby needs or yeah. like some people like like if you take your finger and push on your eyeball you're only going to push the heart right until it the hurts. pressure of what you put a contact on it correct yeah. So again, like you're checking for like, that's all that it takes to adjust a baby. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. So it's not, you're not going to get any of those noises. You're not going to get, you know, a, a large audible. Um, Babies are like ripe, ripe avocados. They are. And they, quite honestly, like they can come in. We don't want to bruise them. They can come in, you know, really, really upset. And I, it is the most magical thing when we're adjusting a baby and mm -hmm. then they maybe are really agitated and all of a sudden they, <gasps> They slow down and then mm -hmm. sometimes like they, they fall asleep yep. or they finally calm down and they, you know, finally are able to poop their pants. Um, well, their body's just, designed to heal itself. It's so cool. You know, parents out there, your children and yourselves, your bodies are designed to heal themselves. And the thing that does that, your brain is what runs that healing program. So if it's not in the right communication, it cannot stay calm. It cannot heal like it's supposed to. And it becomes essential for that communication to be restored so your body can heal properly. And it happens all the times in these little ones. And parents sometimes will get a little, they don't get, they, I, freaked out isn't the word. They just get concerned and they just get protective of their children, which they should yeah, be. You sure. should be protective of your child. You should be protective of, of what their care is. You should be taking, to, taking them to trusted sources in your community, in your life that you can vet and fully trust. We get interviewed numerously throughout the year by parents looking for chiropractors for their children before they bring their children in. I love that. I love getting interviewed. I love meeting people that tell me that chiropractic doesn't work, that what we do doesn't help the body because I love those conversations because usually by the end of them, if we don't agree to disagree, they fully understand what we do and I know that that made an impact on their life even if they don't bring their child in. So when we're adjusting, some of the things we use too, we'll use a pediatric toggle headrest. We'll use a little headrest that clicks and pops a little bit in and out. That can be a little noisy um, for a child, but it's very, very straight, safe, extremely effective, extremely precise. In fact, that's what I teach on worldwide is with that adjusting instrument and that piece, that headrest piece. And in fact, if you see a chiropractor and you don't necessarily see that in the office, I would ask them, what do they use to adjust children? What do they use? If they just hold up their hands and say, yep, and, you, and they say, yeah, we adjust them like adults or they get modified adult adjustments, probably not the case, probably... I mean Car seat adjustments aren't appropriate. Car seat adjustments are not appropriate. Nope. 
that child needs to be brought out. And the other side of it is too, that child needs a full physical exam, a full physical exam, a real wellness checkup, not just height, head circumference, length. Um, do they have all 10 fingers and 10 toes? Do they have some of the simple reflexes that get checked for in a pediatrician's office? You need something very in-depth to make sure that that neurology is fully talking to that okay. child. We take care of a mm -hmm. lot of pediatricians, or we've seen pe the pediatricians take care with, of a lot with, of their, pediatricians with their little kids. ones. Yeah. And after they've seen what we actually do for our mm -hmm. analysis, like, and, they've, and they said that to us in confidence of like, Wow, this I've never is had really my kid check so thoroughly. Put into a different yeah. perspective of like, gosh, maybe I should be doing this mm -hmm. for my patients. I feel like it's been a disservice that I didn't know that all of these things could be or should or, be checked. Or can we send them to you yes. so you can do the checks on them? Because that's a real side of maturity too, is yeah. knowing what you're knowing where your wheelhouse is. And we do that a lot where I know and you know that if it's not in our wheelhouse, we will refer mm -hmm. out or we'll Absolutely. get an expert involved. If we are the expert, we expect people to send patients to us so we can give them the thorough eval. Same thing with tongue ties, lip ties. We do eval. We find those. But also, we don't diagnose them, but we send them to the sources to get I them diagnosed and then get them the exercises, possibly the removals that need to have happen. We work with a myriad of providers here in Green Bay that can help with that. But understanding that and then understanding how the how the actual chiropractor is going to examine your child. They should never just be checked on your shoulder and then adjusted. They should have a thorough examination. They should have all of their reflexes checked. They should have their entire nervous system make sure that it's firing and wiring exactly how it's supposed to. And then if it's not, if it's not, give you the corrective care plan that you need or what needs to be done to actually restore that proper communication so that little one functions exactly how they're supposed to function. Like that is key. And I, I like to just like maybe seven seconds back there of give a care plan that's actually needed, that's needed. not of what a parent wants to hear. Yes. And I think sometimes that's super, super hard that mm -hmm. like if it's your first, any of your kids, you never want somebody to say like, okay, these things are maybe not what it should be for your child or mm -hmm. your child has these things or these of uh, these issues of concern. Mm -hmm. And so it's never easy for a parent to hear that. But I always come from the provider side of, gosh, I would want to know exactly what's wrong with my child so then I can be best educated to figure out the right things that I need to do yeah. to best serve my child. Well, we talked, we just talked about that last week and the week before and the week before all the way back to January is we want parents to have the best communication possible and chiropractors out there that listen and providers and service professionals, you need to be able to provide communication to the parent, to your consumer, to the person that's in front of you so they can trust what's going on with you and what's going on with their child and can you get them better. And honestly, sometimes it's really tough from our perspective because the initial examination to check out a child can actually be a fairly negative experience. And what I mean by that is you are finding things that aren't working correctly in a child that doesn't show proper neurological communication. And the common question I get back is, how come my pediatrician didn't find this? And they get a little upset or why are you contraindicating maybe what the pediatrician had told the parent and the reason why what do you think the reason why is dr julia well like we just said sometimes the pediatrician doesn't even know what to look for or well, they, they don't have been, the chiropractic they training been, they haven't been trained yes to do those certain checks yeah they don't that and that's not a knock on pediatricians they have tons of training and they have amazing training from a medical perspective but when we need a full body neurological functioning perspective to see how the body's communicating and is it staying within its normal intact and communication with the brain? That's where a chiropractic that un that's where a chiropractor that understands what's going on had the training, has the education, and has the experience to check that nervous system will find things, will find changes in communication. And the thing is, is that correcting it and restoring that communication couldn't be more simpler or gentler of a process to restore that life-giving balance of the brain communicating with the body and running that amazing symphony. That's called adaptation, not compensation. I was just thinking of how many thousands of hours that we've thousands, done for continuing thousands, education because thousands. that's how important it is because, mm -hmm. again, we want our kids to be able to experience the absolute best. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't we want that for our community and our parents? Well, and I think every service provider, if they're a chiropractor, a medical doctor, physician's assistant, it doesn't matter, massage therapist, they want the best for their community. 
and they're going to do whatever they can, the good ones, to communicate and have the education they need to constantly be increasing their education because things are changing nonstop in the healthcare world from vaccinations to medications. Now, keep that in mind. Us in, in, in Wisconsin, we are not medical doctors. We don't carry physician status. We don't. But that doesn't mean we do not prescribe medication. We do not give advice on medication. Like that's not what we do. But we can give amazing advice on physiological healthcare. And the stuff that we have extra training in, we can give amazing advice on and be experts in because we are. How we're made and designed to live. How you're made and designed to live. <laughs> and that is the key. And we see this in children all the time. So is chiropractic extremely safe in children? Yes, when performed and done correctly, it is extremely safe, extremely safe. And if you ever go into offices, mom and dads, and you see where you just don't feel comfortable, we've had parents come in here and not feel fully comfortable. I don't want them to proceed with care because I want everyone, everybody uncomfortable that I'm taking care of. I don't want any shadow of a doubt. I don't want any of that. And, and, I don't that's, think and that's okay to have that. It's okay doubt. to have and that. Sometimes if it's, if it's more questions that need to be asked or maybe mm -hmm. just more, more time interaction, maybe just seeing somebody else getting adjusted mm -hmm. because, and that's where like when we have an open concept office, the clinic is set up that way to be able to not have any like scary, well, what's behind that door? And so everything has been thoughtfully, you know, planned yes. and designed so that there aren't any hidden things in our clinic. So everything is wide open, which also lends to the, oh, I can maybe sneak and I can see that baby getting adjusted and realize, oh my goodness, that is so totally different than if you ever worked yourself up over something and all it was was just like a simple ask of something. Mm -hmm. Lots of times a first adjustment can also be that anxiety and that scary for somebody. Can and be. then all of a sudden they see it and they're like, well, that was it? Yep. Yes. That's commonly that's, what I'll get back. But that is years and years of our expertise mm -hmm. and our experience and our training to just give that one what looks like simple adjustment. Well, the key is with all of that, and you're 100% correct, is knowing when to adjust, but more importantly, folks out there and parents, is when not to adjust. It's actually more important that your child come in and not have to have an adjustment versus needing an adjustment on every visit. That is one of the biggest keys to understand is when not to adjust, when to hold back, when to allow the body to keep healing itself without interruption. These are all keys. But if you have a trusted source and somebody that you love dear to your heart, that loves you just as much as you love your family and your kids and you are in the right place. Don't you agree? I agree. That's right. So, Dr. Julie, do you have anything else to put into this wonderful conversation on safety in children and chiropractic? I don't care? know. I love being able to adjust a baby and allow them to have their full life's potential. Mm -hmm. It's just chiropractic kids are they're magical and they are just going to be the future of the world. There you have it. Spoken by no one smarter than I know than Dr. Julie Lees. So, find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram, find us on YouTube, The Prime Podcast. You can find us wherever you want. Leave us some comments below. Now go out there, get it done. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.